Hello everyone, I-80386SX, and you're once again steering at a Compact Prolinea 425S. This has been a long going restoration project, and I guess you can call this part two. I'm not going to get through everything, because I'm still waiting on some parts, but we got a couple tasks at hand tonight. You see, we have a compact flash, I transcend... 512 megabytes. We got a couple of these guys. We got the StarTech version, and I have another version, and it's power cable. So I guess you can call it a bar bed too, because it's going to be a question of will it work? And we have of memory modules all but one oh hold on here I gotta see exactly what we got here and every single one is compact branded in some way shape or form and the seller was nice enough to give me a shipping discount and was very thankful that I bought all four. So before we do anything, number one, we put the right fit on there. As a fellow YouTuber commented, this hard drive made a lot of clicking noises but it was also currently standing at eight megs of RAM if you watched the first video. Or was it the wireless video? Well, one of the videos featuring this computer, this thing was clicking like bad, so. I just gotta figure out how to get it out of there. Okay, yeah, the clips on this thing are extraordinarily strong. Alright, those are at least loose. And these needed to go anyway. If you notice, one is silver plated and the other one is gold plated. Little trick, well, not trick, but a tip with memory modules back in this day. If your slots themselves are gold, you want gold plated memory. Silver, silver. Match up the colors. Oh. Well, we have another accident on this channel. Here's another edition of things made in the USA. This memory module is made in the USA. At least it gives me that impression anyway. Not seeing any indication that it's not. The compact one is made in Japan. That's very good in the technology world. So, but the more I look at it, the other one said upgrade module was a PNY. So originally this machine featured four megs of RAM and whoever had it before me or owners, as the case might be, upgraded it to eight. We're going to 32. That's the highest this machine can go. Yeah, that went in real easy. I don't like that. Try it like that. Double check, make sure it looks like it looks like it's in all the way. So from my understanding, there is a not 
notch. Okay. <laughs> Camera work is shoddy, so the notch goes this way, apparently. The notch is also pin one. And it took me a while to find this memory that I was trying to use the compact charm just because I could. And I was able to find the original part number, which if this one has it on there. So yeah, this is, if you look up on the Prolinea manual, that's the part number. Right. See if the camera to cooperate, and this one's gonna be fun. It's a very tight squeeze. Suppose I'm gonna remove this plastic shield that I don't know what it actually does, but I could remove it. It is in the way, and then some. All right, so we're in. Not going to do the hard drive just yet, so we're going to test one thing at a time. Now I'll find wherever I put my screen here. Didn't go far. I'm not going to put the cover on for this video. You know the old rules. About the time to put the cover on before you test something. It's not going to work. Age old IT rule. Got a keyboard and mouse. If I'm lucky, I didn't put those away yet either. Keyboard we got, mouse. <laughs> May have to search for that one a little bit more. Goodbye, screwdriver. Nice going. Yeah. There's that. I'm gonna keep the keyboard over there so it's out of the way. Alright, so we I'm gonna go find that screwdriver because I about the time I don't do it right away, I'll forget and then I'll help very close. And because I have Windows 95 on this particular hard drive, we're gonna need a mouse. Or it's gonna be a lot easier with a mouse. I'm quite proficient without it, but I'm not going to go through that length of work tonight. So Other critical subject there is power to monitor. Good sign. At least it's detecting one of the modules. We're detecting two of the modules. And we're detecting all four modules, it looks like. Awesome. Let's F10 this and see where it goes. Still detecting the hard drive. I don't know what that Air 1782 is about, but...
And it's not detecting the hard drive now. Now this is a very tight squeeze in here, so anything is possible at this point. There's a very sharp bend of the cable. Oops, my bad. Lots of sharp bends in this thing, so I hope I didn't destroy anything beyond repair here. But Gonna have to put it in order for a short IDA cable, I think. Yeah, we got a pinched cable somewhere. That's okay. What? Oh, that's some hardware. Don't recall installing any hardware before it shut down, but. Yeah, yes, I'm glad I did the memory upgrade first. This thing is considerably better already. Let's see what system manager says. I suppose I could do a memory test on this. Now, if you can see that, uh, we have 32 megs of RAM. Perfect. So far, so good. So, my next exercise here, before I do anything else, I want to make a startup disk. I don't remember how to do that in Windows 95. Oh, there we go. Oh, shoot. So, well... Maybe this is one already. Let's see. When I did my little cleanup, I cleaned up a little too much. But we may be okay here. maybe a Windows Millennium startup disk. So, all right, so. Let's see how fast this program is, just to see what difference the RAM upgrade actually makes.
and yes, Netscape actually loads considerably faster. So, well, we all know that memory upgrades are good for a system, so we already knew that, so no revelation there. I just gotta find my new 95 startup disk. Now, one of these discs are ruined due to a failed attempt at belt finding for my LTE lights. Alright, there's nothing on that guy. That looks like a Windows Millennium startup disk. Okay, I have no idea what's going on here. So, we're just gonna go make a disk quick on my other computer. And for those that don't know already, pretty much this whole channel is unscripted, so we will run into little things like this. Halfway there, we're verifying on my modern computer. It's been 20 minutes, and all we did was upgrade RAM. Kind of feel cheated.
All right, so the disc is created. It did make some awkward noises, but we'll see if that presents a problem later on. See if it boots off the floppy. Meanwhile, I'm going to try and get my uh, new toy prepped for this. And that's feeling like a minor Rubik's Cube right now. So, looks like that's working good. And it does say no drives found. This one that's in here is not connected to anything because I had a lot of trouble getting it to work. So, I just bought a SCSI version of this drive like what was in here before. And we're going to go for the sound card for that. So, but there's your A drive. So, that's good. So, we'll shut her off. So, pretty straightforward card goes in huh. yeah I think I messed this up already card goes in the grooves done profit as far as mounting this thing I'll have to get some creativity out of that but we'll cross that bridge when we get there right now my primary concern is getting the thing to work And just like the fool I am, <laughs> my life's a comedy of errors, and I just grab the old drive. There. There's jumpers on here to make this a master and a slave, right where my, uh, where my thumb was, and right above that red light. That'll, by default, it's set to master. That's what we want here. And I'm, this one looks like it plugs directly into the IDE port, which I don't think is going to work. It might if we remove the modem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a more expensive StarTech one for this. Unless that is the same... StarTech one looks like it's a dual version. And it's even nice to, nice enough to say what your jumpers do right on a machine. That's real nice. So let's double check that. I They're all set to 1-2, so I'm going to stick with that. Same drill card in done profit now the compact bios has never been nice to anybody as much as i love these machines i love this form factor they're a colossal pain in my butt I'm going to try to find that anti-static thing that this thing came with. Alright. Power this thing on. We got a red light on the adapter. We'll have to go in the BIOS right away and see what we're being detected as.
and unfortunately the escape button does not speed up this RAM count on the early 486s. It does in the later ones. That is definitely more than 121 megabytes. So I'm not sure where it's getting that value from, but... That should do it. You kind of have to guess. There are certain compact flash cards that'll work and some that just won't. Transcends are supposed to have good luck with chassis. Disc is the next step we want to do. Yeah, that's kind of unusual. The flashcard was empty. I guess I should have checked that out before I put this in, but well, we'll see where it goes. Format. Our drive. This is all rudimentary DOS stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says there are no partitions. That's what I find interesting. Pretty sure I went through this, but we'll go through it again.
And let's go to app disk. Let's skip the format. Okay. Let's restart this machine. Let's see what it says. See if it kept our value or if it did something else that's stupid. Yeah, it went back. Okay. I don't understand that at all. So, maybe... Let's try a different CF card. Maybe I got a dud. We'll try this one next. I didn't have any success with this card on another compact, but that doesn't mean that's we won't hear. This one detects as the correct size, so okay. So we'll F3 and we'll save our changes and let's see where this takes us, if anywhere. Awesome. Now well, I spoke too soon. I think this is what the other card was doing, or this card was doing in other machines. So, I got a couple more to try. Get firing out one off two. Now, there is rumblings that this BIOS can't handle drives higher than 512 megabytes, but there are entries in the BIOS. For 600 meg drives, so we're gonna give we're gonna give this two gig card a flyer, and we'll see what it goes. Size is right. Let's save the changes. I'm sure not feeling particularly great about where we're going at this point, but we'll see.
no shenanigans. Of course, the original 512 did that too, so. I'm going to see if we can get rid of the CD-ROM drivers on this. Everything's an unscripted mess on this channel. Yeah, I know I already missed a trick here. Bye bye banana. Good sign. We at least we see partitions now, but I am going to blow this one away because I don't know what we have going on here, if anything. Went awful fast. Let's see where we're, this takes us. Let's see what F disk has to say about what's on this. Five oh three. And I'm not sure if that's a limitation of this uh, computer or if there's something else going on, but if we can get one of these to work, I'll be very happy. Take the disc out, let's see what it does with anything. Okay, yeah, that's what I was getting with the other ones. One other trick I'll decide to try and do here.
That's interesting. There's supposed to be a way to fix the MBR in case that was a problem, but apparently can't. did something. Let's see if it gets us beyond that J prompt. getting somewhere now because we do not have the disc in it is well that doesn't show much but we have a C prompt so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card out dare I do that oh boy and we're gonna copy a Windows 95 installation directory on there so with the magic of video editing, I'll be right back, and once I have that in place, we'll continue on with our badness here. All right, we got a Windows 95 directory installed, so, or I should say, installation files. This is a Windows 95 RTM installation I'm gonna try to do. Now, I did put this compact flash card in my Windows 10 machine. It did see about 1.3 something gigs on you, so. I'm going to chalk that up to a limitation with this computer, but that's okay. Now the question is, will this screw up what I just did? So far, so good. Now, we have a fully readable directory. Barking about compressions, I think I use a Windows 95B startup disk on this originally. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of not the same without hearing the Seagate clicks of wonder on this thing, so. I'll take a little bit getting used to, but oh well. And this is my highly technical method of censorship. We'll see what happens. All right, good, it took the key. sound card so I'll do its thing with that
there is still signs of hard drive activity, so I'm not going to shut it off just yet. Looks like everything is coming along nicely so far. And I'm not going to install any of that stuff. Install the most common components. I'm going to make a startup disk right now. And away we go. I said most of you probably already know this, but you're going to be, even with the compact flash card in there, you're going to be bound to the speeds of the IDE bus that's on this machine. So don't expect your Samsung Evo 960 speeds. It still takes a little bit of time, but well, who would have thought it'd probably take double that with the spitting rust here. And this is not even from a I think it is from a Prolinea, that particular hard drive, but it wasn't from a, a 486 based Prolinea. I think it came out of a Prolinea 575 or something like that. So, But either way, they work just fine.
Okay, looks like so far we're three minutes into this installer. All right, we'll finish. Disc is out of the drive. So, so far, so good. All right, time zone. I'm in the central time zone, so that's what we're going to do here. I don't have a printer. We're going to restart. I got the SCSI controller, that's the sound card. Don't know why it didn't detect that uh, any sooner. But better late than never, right?
perfect. So we got an operating system on a compact flash card. So I am going to go beyond this uh, the shackles of the 16 color display here. Man, I don't know what the difference between one versus the other is, so I am going to go the generic plug and play as much as possible here. All right, 16 colors are a no-go. Oh, 256. There may be a driver I need to get for that uh, Seng Labs video card. I'm not honestly sure, or maybe there is some underlying problem with it that I'm not seeing. All right, that's a little bit better. That. No problems here. Just says the generic IDE disc. Nothing too fancy here. We got SCSI controllers. We got a metric ton of COM ports. There's one other thing that I am going to do. There is something very offensive on Windows 95A that needs to go right away. Well, it's not going to go completely, but it is going to be. There's going to be some attention given to it right now. Do bear with me here, it should take a couple of minutes. And thankfully, because we're using a modern day CF card, transferring files is a breeze. piece of software I have to look for. It'll take a little bit to find it. Bear with me here. stuff we don't need for this exercise. And I will have to come up with a better way to mount this. Uh, while we were waiting, I did buy a short IDE cable on eBay, so we'll have to wait for that to come, and that'll be restoration part three. So far, so good.
All right, so probably don't need to take along for this one, but one of the things we need to do is put some resemblance uh, of a real web browser on here. I know Internet Explorer <laughs> is not exactly a real web browser, but version 3.02 is closer to a real web browser than versions 1 or 2. And I'd be really surprised if no restarts were required out of this. Still going, still going good. Yeah, we're yeah, we're not completely locked up. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to do something. Not yet. This is the closest thing to a real web browser in the nineties. We'll put that on there too. Well, it's doing that. This shouldn't choke it now that we got a compact flash card in there. Plenty of space. Good. All right, so I'll just do the defaults. Uh... All right, so we don't need any of this crap. I don't know what the hell that is, so. And 
and I should have paid attention to what I clicked on. I have a feeling this is going to install some stuff I don't want, like real player, which no one in their right mind would want, but... Oh well, at least we got... At least we did this with a compact flash card and not spinning rust or 8 megs of RAM. Because we'll be here till next Christmas if we were to do that. But... And on second thought, I'm kind of glad that I am doing this with you guys just to see how long it would take to install a web browser using a compact flash versus an IDE drive of the era. I don't have any network cards in here. I do have a modem, although it is basically a useless modem. Imagine everybody cries around 14.4, or at least the younger crowd, or my crowd does. That 14.4k modems are the slowest thing on earth. You dead wrong. I've had a compact armada with a 7.2k modem in it, but this thing takes the cake. So far, this has a 2.4k modem in it. So, that's some slow dial up. And I do have some other projects lined up for this machine. Hopefully I get a video going in the near future. It's a little product called ProtoWeb. And this would be a perfect candidate to show it on. May dig out the LTE and lights for that, I'm not sure yet, but Either way, a 486 space compact is going to be featured when I do that video. I'm surprised this is there's quite a bit to this web browser apparently I never really paid that close attention use this a lot in school but never installed it didn't really have any power to install much of anything but well I'm doing now I kind of got to think ahead here Well, you can't really see it, but I am trying to compare notes to see how wide this adapter is. It looks like it's a two and a half inch. So basically like a notebook drive. So that should be pretty easy to come up with an adapter for it. But I'm not going to do that tonight. That'll be featured in the next restore video of this thing.
And this always takes a while. And apparently Netscape has its own registry, which is nice. Oh, learn something new every day, right? Yeah, it just doesn't install real players. So, yeah. We're going to break this thing in right away. Yeah, it's, I think we're waiting on CPU cycles at this point as the hard drive light's not doing much of anything. I think I'm starting to wish now that I 
paid attention here a little bit more to this installer, but hard drive light's starting to work on and off pretty good now, so. Once this gets done, I think I'm gonna pretty much end it for tonight. And, yeah, that's not necessary. I don't need to read me for a web browser, but... I am not going to restart this computer now. But we're able to get everything installed. Unfortunately, I'm saddled with real player right now, but... Not a big deal. And that's it. So, you can call this the restoration part two. You can call it a bar bet. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it a waste of your time. And you're probably right. <laughs> but, at the end of the day, this video pretty much turned into a how to install a compact flash to IDE adapter in an early 486 based compact Olenia. And just for reference, I don't know if I showed it at the beginning, this is the adapter that I ended up using. There's a, I did buy another cheaper one that came with the same Amazon package. It may work, it may be too tall, I don't know. And I don't know, just in case I didn't show it already, I know it's probably upside down, but it's, that is the uh, compact flash card that did work in this machine. Although, we had a 503 megabyte limit, and that's, I believe, just a limitation of this computer. So, some things to watch out for, but at any rate, it's working. You saw it working. So, I'm very happy, pleasantly surprised. So, thank you to the gentleman or lady that suggested that MBR trick on the vintage computer swap and meet Facebook group. So that was what got me over that hump, so kudos. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or constructive criticism, please feel free to put it in the comments section. Thank you again for watching a very slow going restoration program.